Well, we have a detailed report tonight on what may be the most compelling evidence that President Trump may have obstructed justice. From the start of Rudy Giuliani's public defense of Donald Trump, obstruction of justice has always been the part of the Mueller investigation that Rudy Giuliani obviously fears the most, which might be why Rudy Giuliani and the president prefer to talk about collusion rather than obstruction. This is the week when the Trump defense motto seems to have shifted from there was no collusion to collusion is not a crime. We will spare you the video of the president saying for more than a year now there was no collusion. I think we've all heard that quite enough. But the new repetition of collusion is not a crime begun by Rudy Giuliani and now seconded by the president this morning in a tweet is a defense shift that seems to indicate the president and Rudy Giuliani might be preparing for the revelation from Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller that there were links or coordination between the Russian government and individuals associated with the campaign of President Donald Trump. Rudy Giuliani has been making much of the fact that the word collusion does not have any criminal legal meaning except in antitrust law, but the words I just used links and coordination don't have any legal meaning in and of themselves but they are exactly the words used to describe what special prosecutor Robert Mueller is specifically authorized to investigate when Rod Rosenstein appointed Robert Mueller he authorized the special prosecutor to conduct an investigation of quote any links and or coordination between the Russian government and individuals associated with the campaign of President Donald Trump. And then Rod Rosenstein added something else, a general, wide open authorization for the special prosecutor to investigate, quote, any matters that arose or may arise directly from the investigation. That allows Robert Mueller to investigate anything that the FBI and his prosecutors discover while they are investigating any links and or coordination between the Russian government and the Trump campaign. Anything at all. That's how Robert Mueller began investigating Michael Cohen's involvement in paying off Stormy Daniels and other women for their silence about sex with Donald Trump. And even though the special prosecutor is authorized to investigate any links and or coordination with the Russian government, if Robert Mueller finds that, the word that will be used in any indictments about that won't be links and or coordination. The crime will be called conspiracy, and so the Trump-Giuliani new line of defense that collusion is not a crime has no legal meaning. And we already know that Robert Mueller has found links and coordination between the Russian government and individuals associated with the campaign of Donald Trump. The meeting at Trump Tower with Russians during the campaign shows that there are links between the Russian government and the campaign. We already know that when the Russian government offered to coordinate with Donald Trump Jr. to provide dirt on Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump Jr. said, I love it. Now, we have no idea what other links and coordination Robert Mueller has found between the Russian government and the Trump campaign, and we don't know whether any of those links and coordination constitute criminal conduct by anyone named Trump. We watched Donald Trump on the campaign stage publicly try to link with the Russian government and coordinate with the Russian government on Hillary Clinton's emails. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. Robert Mueller will have to decide whether that constitutes a criminal conspiracy to illegally coordinate with the Russian government to the benefit of the Trump campaign or whether it's a component of that in some way. The most dangerous part of Robert Mueller's authority for the president and everyone near the president is the second part of Robert Mueller's authority, which is to investigate, quote, any matters that arose or may arise directly from the investigation, which brings us to obstruction of justice. Those words do not appear in the authorization of the Mueller investigation, but that second component of the authority, which is anything that arises in the investigation includes anything, including obstruction of justice. The part of the Mueller investigation that Rudy Giuliani publicly fears the most is obviously the obstruction of justice part. We have new reporting on that 
today from Mari Wass in the New York Review of Books. Mari Wass says that he has been allowed to read a confidential White House memo which is in the special prosecutor's possession, which, quote, explicitly states that when Trump pressured Comey, he had just been told by two of his top aides, his then chief of staff, Franz Priebus, and his White House counsel, Don McGahn, that Michael Flynn was under criminal investigation. Last year, the Trump defense team delivered a letter to Robert Mueller outlining their defenses of the president on obstruction of justice. The key element of their defense was that President Trump did not know that his national security advisor, Michael Flynn, was being investigated by the FBI when the president talked to FBI Director James Comey about, quote, letting Flynn go. James Comey quotes the president as having told him, I hope you can see your way clear to letting this go, to letting Flynn go. He is a good guy. I hope you can let this go. The Trump defense team has said that it is impossible for that conversation to constitute obstruction of justice because the president did not know that the FBI was then investigating Michael Flynn. But Murray Wass is reporting that the White House memo that he read is a timeline prepared by White House counsel Don McGahn showing every step that occurred in the White House and exactly who knew what and when in what became the story of the firing of National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Murray Wash reports the February 15th memo combined with accounts given to the special counsel by Priebus and McGahn constitute the most compelling evidence we yet know of that Donald, yet know of that Donald Trump may have obstructed justice. The most compelling evidence that the president may have obstructed justice appears to come from his own most senior and loyal aides. The greatest threat to his presidency is not from his enemies, real or perceived, but from his allies within the White House. Leading off our discussion now, John Heilman, national affairs analyst for NBC News and MSNBC. He's co-host and executive producer of Showtime's The Circus. Also with us, Danny Savalos, MSNBC legal contributor. And Barbara McQuaid, former federal prosecutor. She's a professor of law at the University of Michigan and an MSNBC legal contributor. And John Heilman, uh, here is the Watergate echo. It turns out the people who can do the most damage to the president work in the White House. That was absolutely true in Watergate. It was not the Democrats whose office got broken into who took down President Nixon. It's always the case, right? And it's the case because they are the closest. They are the ones who are writing things down. They're the ones that even in this chaotic White House, this White House that breaks so many norms and does so many things that are outside the bounds of what we've ever seen from White Houses before, there are a bunch of people like Don McGahn and there are others like Ryan Priebus who thought, hey, we're supposed to be doing this the way other people did it. We don't really know what that is. Yeah. But like things like timelines and things like paying attention to some basic uh, rules of, of, of procedure and, and some the way in which you're supposed to do stuff in the White House govern their thinking enough that it could be the thing that ends up undoing the president on this front. And Barbara McQuaid, it seems to have uh, guided their thinking certainly at the beginning of the presidency because this Michael Flynn story is at the beginning of the presidency and it might actually be the period in the Trump presidency where people like Don McGahn were operating most closely by the book, uh, possibly because they didn't realize how wild the whole place was going to become. Yeah, I think this could be a very significant uh, factual development. And, you know, it has an echo of, remember when there was that tweet that President Trump put out that said, I had to fire Mike Flynn because he lied to the FBI. And then his lawyer, I think it was John Dowd, came back very quickly and said, no, 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 I, I put out that, that yes. tweet and I got it wrong. Um, so it, it does ring true that this is um, a fact that they have known for a long time is a troubling fact because when you try to uh, have to establish obstruction of justice, you have to show that the person acted with a corrupt intent. And if President Trump knew and learned even just before he asked Jim Comey to stand down on the Flynn investigation, I think there could be some powerful evidence of that corrupt intent that's necessary. And according to Murray Wass's reporting, uh, this, is, this is very clear. This is kind of beyond doubt. It says, people familiar with the matter have told me that both Priebus and McGahn have confirmed in separate interviews with the special counsel that they had told Trump that Flynn was under investigation by the FBI before he met with Comey. And Danny, this dismantles one of the uh, the key element in the uh, Trump lawyer's letter to the special prosecutor about why Donald Trump could not have committed obstruction of justice in the Flynn matter. Yeah, but the Trump's team theory from the beginning didn't make a lot of sense. I mean, their position is that 
Trump knew there was no longer an investigation. And then he walks into a meeting and says, hey, by the way, I hope you can see fit to let go, parentheses, an investigation that's not going on. That doesn't make any sense, but that's the Trump team's position. In a way, this bombshell is something that makes a lot more sense than the Trump team's original theory, which is Trump believes there's no investigation. Trump goes into meeting with Comey and asks Comey to let go of an investigation that, as far as Trump is aware, does not exist. And so, John, uh, this reporting, if true, yeah. is yet another uh, really clear uh, lock on the issue of is Donald Trump ever going to sit down for an interview with the special prosecutor? I mean, you and I have been saying all along he's never going to do it. Yeah, no. But this is the kind of thing that shows you why it's been impossible, because the Trump team has known for over a year that uh, Priebus and McGahn say and, and have told the special prosecutor that uh, they told Donald Trump that the FBI investigation was ongoing. Uh, and, and so how does Donald Trump handle that? Uh, in any in any kind of interchange with the special prosecutor. Yeah, because just like uh, the word collusion and the word conspiracy are not in Robert Mueller's remit, and the word obstruction of justice is not in it, so neither is the word perjury. But, <laughs> right, but, perjury, right. but perjury is a big problem for yeah. Donald Trump, just because not only because he's an inveterate liar, but because he's already told so many lies that so many people on the inside know are lies. The, the, you, I, the lawyers that we're with here tonight are lawyers, and, and I'm going to not play a lawyer on TV like I sometimes try to, and just say a couple things about a couple of the humans that we're talking about here. Guys like Ryan Priebus and Don McGahn, if, if this timeline exists, if Murray Wass's reporting is right, and they were brought in to talk to Bob Mueller, they testified to it, because neither one mm -hmm. of those guys is going to perjure themselves for Donald Trump. They're not going mm -hmm. to. Another guy we got to always remember, we, he keeps coming back in our minds, and there are a lot of problems with him as a political actor, but Steve Bannon, mm -hmm. who very quickly identified to Michael Wolff and to other people that the obstruction of justice thing was going to, was going to be the thing that would hang Trump because of the fact that he's a mo keep firing Comey is the worst political decision you've ever made because he knew not necessarily directly, not necessarily because he was involved in putting together these timelines, but because he was everywhere in that White House. And he knew what the truth of these stories were. It's why he always grasped the fact that the obstruction thing was such a difficult problem for Trump and why some of the things that we're now hearing that Michael Cohen has been saying are also things that Steve Bannon, even if he wasn't in the room, he knew about enough from being around you. If you want to know where Trump's problems are, go back and read all the stuff Steve Bannon has said in the past. This is why this obstruction thing is one of the key ones. Barbara McQuaid, what is Donald Trump's best defense on this point at, at, at this stage of the evidence as we know it? Well, I think he would have to, you know, I, I don't know that he's going to be able to refute Jim Comey's testimony about what it was he said, but if he can show that it was for some other purpose other than to cover up his own misconduct or the, the, the misconduct of people in his campaign, that might be the best. If you could show that there was not a corrupt motive. Yes, he knew that Michael Flynn was under investigation, but he believed that it was a waste of taxpayer funds, that he believed that it would be fruitless to try to uh, go after this kind of a case. Um, if he can show that there was some other motive other than corrupt intent, that might be the best. But, um, you know, at, at some point, uh, I think there's going to be a reckoning with Robert Mueller. Either he sits down for an interview or Robert Mueller has the ability to use a grand jury subpoena to get that information out of him. So um, at, at some point, I think he is, is going to face that reckoning. Let's listen to what Senator Richard Blumenthal said today about the obstruction of justice case. There is credible evidence that the President of the United States has committed obstruction of justice and possibly a conspiracy to undermine our elections. That's simply the facts and the law, and Giuliani is trying to confuse and distract, playing word games and semantics, but at the end of the day, the special counsel is going to proceed methodically and meticulously in making the case. And uh, Vanity Fair is reporting tonight that Don McGahn, this is a line in the report, Don McGahn hates Rudy with intensity of a thousand burning suns. And, and Danny, that's, that's related to the word games that, that Rudy Giuliani has been playing uh, on television. And it, it's it, just to real legal practitioners, that sounds like a reasonable reaction to what we've seen Rudy Giuliani doing. If you're on the Trump side of the case and you're watching Rudy Giuliani on TV, there can't be anything you like about it. He's violating a lot of the basic rules of defense attorney 101. 
Don't ever criticize prosecutors. You can criticize the case. Hey, we're going we're gonna to move to suppress this evidence. It was a bad warrant. But never tell the prosecutors on the news that they need to wrap things up, that their investigation is corrupt. That isn't going to go a long way. And prosecutors will stay an extra five hours in the office just to stick it to your client if you do that. And the other thing that Rudy is falling victim to is taking everything his client is telling him in his initial meetings and going Going out into the world with it as gospel. Every attorney has been burned by a client when they don't double check whatever the client or the client's family tells them about the way things are. And that's because clients, they can't help it. They have self-interest. They don't want to commit suicide. They want to tell their attorney the best set of facts they can think of. And Rudy already has gone out to the world with facts that are not really developed or that are eventually refuted. And that's the kind of thing that can burn you. Rudy Giuliani may be ahead of all of us in this game, but so far, if you look at some of the basic rules of Defense Attorney 101, he's done a, it's been a bit of a stumble. He's really sloppy, right? Lawyers don't like sloppy. Yeah, you can't good lawyers be, don't like sloppy. You can't be sloppy when you're representing those facts, especially because he's probably being told those by Team Trump. And if you don't verify those on your own, they will come back to bite you, not just at trial, but in the news. Barbara, the uh, the shift from uh, there was no collusion to, hey, collusion's not a crime. What's your reading of that? Well, it seems like a very deliberate effort, doesn't it? I mean, this isn't just one person saying it. We've got everybody uh, echoing and singing off the same sheet of music. It seems like they sat down and had a meeting this weekend and said, oh, my gosh, we need to change our strategy. And it suggests to me that there is evidence of collusion that's going to come out, and they need to figure out a way around that. And so say, okay, there is collusion, but so what? Cause, because collusion isn't a crime. So I don't know if it is uh, concerns about uh, what we're learning about uh, the meeting with at Trump Tower with Russians, if there was, in fact, perhaps some sort of pre-meeting that puts President Trump knowing about the meeting, maybe that's what they are concerned is going to be labeled as collusion. And so to instead uh, pivot and say, even if there was, it's not a crime. It does seem like a very deliberate strategy, um, and it does seem that they're worried that there is evidence of collusion that is going to come out into, into the public. Before the break uh, that we're going to go through in a second, John, I just want to squeeze in a political angle here. Yeah. In that same Vanity Fair report that says Don McGahn hates Rudy with the intensity of a thousand burning suns, Gets poetic there sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is this about John Kelly in that same Vanity Fair report. Yesterday afternoon, Trump marked his first year as chief, as chief with a tweet, congratulations to General John Kelly. Today we celebrate his first full year as White House Chief of Staff, Trump wrote. Afterward, according to two sources familiar with the matter, Trump turned to aides and said, now can I get rid of him? Yeah. Uh, apparently, apparently the answer, though, was no, because now it looks like we're going to have John Kelly all the way through to the end of the election. But, it, but in the Trump... Uh, doesn't mean that Trump doesn't yeah, still want to get rid Trump of Trump administration, yeah. you're my chief of staff uh, for the rest of the term, means you're my chief of staff tomorrow. Sure. But I, I also or at least tomorrow morning. I, what, it's either with six of one hat does the other. It's, it's clear that Trump both doesn't like Kelly, but also thinks that he's now completely neutered him and does whatever he wants. The, that is, Trump does whatever he mm -hmm. wants. And so the offer of... Asking him to stay till the uh, till the election a means nothing because he could be fired tomorrow. Right. But also, even if he stays until the election, to what effect? Mm -hmm. It's not as though Kelly is exercising any kind of thus vaunted discipline uh, and control that we ever thought that Kelly was going to exercise over Trump. All right, we have to get to our first break here. Barbara McQuaid, Danny Savellos, John Hallman, thank you for starting us off tonight. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from the Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.